Noelle Hyman writes, Who has tried the DIY thickers? How did they work for you? Did your glitter and beads stick enough to cover the white underneath? Glitter Girl, can you help Noelle with this DIY dilemma? Of course I can. Let's have a look at this new product from American Crafts. It's called DIY Thickers. And basically they are thickers uh, cut in the most popular fonts throughout um, kind of thicker history, if you will. And instead of having a color or a finish already, they're customizable. So these are foam thickers that have adhesive on the back, of course, but then they also have a paper backing on the front. And when you just peel that off, you have an adhesive layer on the top so that you can add whatever finish you want to the letters. So there are various different things you can use and I'll um, take you through some different options and uh, also a few things that don't work very well just so that you don't have to waste your time trying them. <laughs> and we'll start with the products that they're meant to go with and that's the glitters and other um, little additions from American Crafts. So I have two of their wow glitters here, one in the extra fine and one in the chunky and um, they both will work they just come up with a different finish let me see if I put some of these on the mat you can have a look at how they differ kinds of glitter so this is the extra fine it's very very small pieces and very powdery in your fingertips the chunky glitter on the other hand is great big pieces that are little circles so, making your own finish to the thickers is as simple as just choosing the letter that you want, peeling off the top, and adhering whatever um, glitter or other bits and pieces that you want to add. Now, you can do it straight on the sheet, um, but I'll show you the first one on the sheet, and then I'll show you why I prefer to cut them apart. So, I'm just going to put this on the craft mat. And let's see, why don't I start with this one in the middle, and I'll do this, oops, this letter G. And I'm going to start with that extra fine glitter. So I've taken the top layer off to reveal the adhesive. And then just tap the glitter so that you're covering all of the, all of the letter. Nice and simple. And then it, it will be quite stuck. It'll be stuck well on its own, but just to make sure that I get glitter on all the edges, I tend to press it down a little bit like this. And then tap that all off, and you can see I'm giving that quite a bit of pressure, and it's all still stuck. So the letter's still covered, and if I touch it now, that letter's not sticky at all. So the adhesive on the top is very... Um, is a very good quality and, and, and does take the, the glitter really, really well. You will see that you get a lot of glitter, loose glitter just stuck to the static of the adhesive backing sheet. So um, I tend to cut the letters apart so that I don't worry about getting all of this extra glitter, it might get stuck to the next letter that I want to do. And obviously the, the glory of doing them yourself is that you don't have to do the whole alphabet all in one color. So what if I want to do then this G in another color and I get that stray pink glitter in my way? So that's why I tend to cut them apart. But it's certainly possible to do them right there on the sheet if that is preferable to your method of storing your thicker sheets and things like that. I know that's important sometimes. So I'll try this same technique with the chunky glitter to show you the difference between the two. So this time I have cut it apart and I'm just peeling the top layer off. Pour the glitter over the top. Just make sure you can't see any of the white through. Press it down to make sure everything is extra, extra stuck. Then pick it up and shake off all the extra. Now, with the bigger pieces, it is more possible to get gaps just because of how the geometry of it all works, the, the larger the tiles that you're trying to fill the space with, the more likely you're going to have some gaps here and there. So what I do is shake it off and then put it back in, just, um, just turn it over. 
and then you can see if there are any gaps and press it back into the glitter to cover those. And now everything is well and truly stuck there. So I can brush off all those extras and my letter is nice and covered. Very, very, very sparkly. One more thing I'm going to try is to take the the sticker bit on the top, or the, the, the layer on the top, and only take half of it off. So I'm going, I'm using the letter D and I'm just going to fold the layer on the top. So now I'm only releasing the adhesive on the bottom of the letter. And I'm going to leave my glitter in the pot and I'm going to dunk my letter inside. And then I can shake it off right over the jar. So that's even less mess. And now I have my letter half in the extra fine pink glitter. Then I'm going to take the chunky red glitter, take the top and um, the rest of the, that whole layer off, and dunk it in the red glitter. And now I have a letter that's half and half. So you could create an entire title by choosing the two colors that are in your layout and you might have two colors that look fabulous together. I just happen to have these two jars so I wanted to show you that technique. And you can um, just do half of all the letters in one color, do the top half in the other color, and then you'll have this perfectly coordinated alphabet that goes exactly with the papers that you've put together and definitely looks like something you've created just for that layout rather than something you purchased in a package. So now American Crafts also sell pop and spark, which are um, different things you can add to the top. Some are little tinsels, kind of like giant shaped glitter, and some that are um, tiny tiny little beads beads that don't have they're, they're smaller than any beads you could actually wire they don't have holes in them this is a similar product this is just a very old um, stamping product that I had in my stash and these are um, this is just clear but the American Crafts version comes in all different colors so it's a teeny teeny tiny little round bead so we'll give those a try next And obviously you could pick any color that you wanted to use for your project, but I just have these in the clear, so we'll give that a go. Same technique. I tend to go very slowly with these because they're much harder to control than glitter, and if you're a sensible person, you will do this on some sort of tray so that they don't just fly everywhere. But you know, sensible is not my middle name. Same deal, just pushing them onto the letter to make sure everything is stuck. And in this case, it's not because there'll be gaps, it's because the dimensionality, since they're round rather than flat, means that sometimes they're a bit more likely to um, not have stuck entirely but if you press them down because it's because the thickers are foam if you press them down it will grip really well so and I've got a tiny little bit of red glitter in there but I don't think it's actually stuck no okay so there's a look at the tiny tiny glass beads then a few products that are not in the American Crafts lineup but something to try so let's start with this one and peel the top of this off. And this is from Doodlebug, this um, jar. And this is flocking. Now Doodlebug do some really lovely glitters and of course they'll attach, any brand of glitter will attach here. Um, but this is flock, which is a really strange substance in the bottle um, because it looks kind of like dry mold, but there we go. Um, it's, a, it's a really soft powder and Doodlebug do some papers that already come flocked and, and various other companies do, but it's basically that look where, where you get the adhesive pattern and it has a kind of fuzzy, like a little bit like velvet covering. So this is that, that velvet, but in a jar. Um, and it will certainly stick, but it has a very strange way of going on. You can see that it just kind of 
creates tiny little gray clouds and it sticks to itself. There's a lot of static involved in how Flock works, apparently. And just keep going till it's all covered. Now, same thing as before that you want to press it in just to make sure everything is stuck. And then you may find that there are places where you have to go back because the flock makes it a little harder to see where things are falling than the glitter. Right. And then same idea as before, turn it over and shake the extra. Now, this is one that is definitely helpful to cut apart because a lot of it sticks to the background. That's what I mean, that there's a lot of static and it really does. But if I peel this off, you can start to see that it is, it does, it's very defined and easy to read um, once it's off the, um, off the background sheet. But because so much of it sticks to the backing, it does on the sheet look a little bit funny, but it does work really well once you've taken it off. And if you touch the top of it, it's not adhesive. There's no glue sticking through the, the flocking. So that does work. And um, flock is, I find, much messier than glitter, if that's um, to be believed. <laughs> but uh, if you like the velvet finish, and you, the idea of having velvet finish thicker is quite a lovely idea. And this does come in um, different colors. You might already have this in your collection. So that's something that you can give a try with the DIY thickers. And then how about something that's a little less messy? <laughs> I put this to the side. One of the things you can do is actually opt to leave the top cover on the thickers and not pull it off and just change the color. Now I'm going to, need to color these two letters with pens but I'm going to show you the difference between using a normal water-based marker and an alcohol-based marker. So here's my my water-based marker and if I cover it just a tiny little bit and I don't go back over it too much it will work because it certainly picks up the color and that's easy enough however now where I have these brush lines from the the strokes of the pen if I go back and try to even this out just on that second coat that paper backing is already too saturated and starts to peel up and bubble. And now I have this big mess of all those paper flakes on top. And I'm destroying that layer that's keeping the adhesive underneath. So the water-based marker is not ideal. If you do use it, you need to be very um, gentle and just do one single coat because if you go back and try and do another one, it's quite likely that the paper is going to disintegrate. However, if you have any alcohol-based markers like Copics, you can um, you can get away with not worrying about that. So, if you cover the letter with this sort of pen, because it's not water-based, it doesn't cause the paper to disintegrate or beat up. Now, my other worry with using an alcohol-based pen was something. Um, less to do with the paper, I worried that it might cause the paper to peel up, not that it would disintegrate, just that it would detach from the adhesive. But so far I haven't found that problem at all and I've put several coats of the markers on. So you can do sort of a, a faded letter and people who are excellent at coloring will have far, far more skill in this technique than I do, but I'm just going to give you a a simple demonstration and some people are amazingly talented with pens like this and they'll do all sorts of brilliant work. But in this case, so now I have this faded letter and I don't have that disintegrated paper at all. It's just the same finish as it was when I started. And if I want to blend that back a bit, if that fade isn't um, isn't soft enough for me, I can come back with my lighter coat on top and the paper is still not 
disintegrating. So there's lots of different things you could do with an alcohol-based marker system and use that on top of the paper. If you liked the idea of having letters that you could color um, and create your own sort of work of art, but still have it be a thicker where it's, it's raised up off the page, that would be a really good combination for you if that's your sort of technique. And of course they come in all different fonts, so you might want to go for one that's a bit thicker so that you'd have plenty of room to color and doodle on top. One more thing to try, if you have all sorts of different glitters and finishes just sitting around afterward, is that you can, of course, mix them all together so that you end up with a custom mix of whatever colors you want to put together. Then you can take your letter, peel off the backing, well, that top layer, and then you can just dip it into your mix of finishes. So this is a little bit of the red, a little bit of the extra fine pink, and some of those clear glass beads. And then you can get a letter that's just the colors you want in a, in a mixed um, finish. So definitely, again, something that's very custom to your layout. And you can get that just by putting everything together and and mixing it up on your craft sheet. Really, really simple. The other thing you can do then is to take all of those different techniques and mix them up. So if I wanted to use these blue letters on a very wintry layout, for example, I might go ahead and color most of the paper in with the um, alcohol markers and then take my scissors and cut off just the paper back at the very, very top of the letter and put those white beads or a white glitter over the top for a bit of a snowy effect. All sorts of different ways you could combine the different techniques to to create a set of thickers that's just perfect for your page. And with that in mind, I'm going to get started on a layout in just a moment, but I wanted to give you a couple words of warning on things that don't work particularly well. The first thing that I was really excited to try was embossing powder. And I thought that since the top layer was adhesive, it would be really easy to, um, to just I'd adhere the, the embossing powder, hit it with the heat gun, and I'd have this really lovely glossy um, finish. However, because the thickers are foam rather than chipboard or anything else, when you hit it with the heat gun, the foam bubbles up and melts. So if you keep your heat gun really far away, you get really, really uneven embossing powder and it's all bubbly. If you then try and get closer and melt it at a higher temperature, the whole letter shrinks and the foam just turns into one little ball. So unfortunately, embossing powder is not the best choice for the DIY thickers. The next thing I tried was to go to something really big, like beads that you would actually thread on um, on a string to make jewelry. So I tried two different sizes, these plain black seed beads and then um, a mix of beads that's really, really tiny, but all the kind that you could put on, um, on a thread to make a necklace. And in general, what I found is that with the DIY thickers, the larger the item you're adhering, the less clear the shape will be. So they will stick. They're not coming loose. They stick just fine to the adhesive, and it will hold something that heavy like a bead. But because it's not so fine, it's really hard to make out the shape around the edges because things aren't going to stick perfectly like the, um, the teeny tiny glitters. So if you want to use beads, you can give it a try. They will definitely stick, but just keep in mind that um, an intricate shape is not going to be very clear. So they might be things that you wanted to use more as embellishments like on the asterisk type um, elements of the thickers and not something that you want to be highly legible. Okay, with all that in mind and all those different techniques, I think I'm going to put these away and make a layout and use the DIY thickers for my title. Okay, ready to get started with a layout and I've pulled out a variety of papers. I'm going to be working with a black cardstock background and then I've pulled out some things that are new and some that are slightly older. From um, the new classic calico collection which is their second group. Now the first calico collection from Studio Calico was all craft based or that tan color but in the new collection there's a mix um, including some black and white and some gray and white as well as the craft tone. So they're all they're all still neutrals um, but I'm going to pull out the black. So there's a black with a white uh, dot but it's filled in with graph paper so it's a little bit more distressed without being 
too um, scratched on the top, but just a little bit of something different. And then this one, which has these little um, Polaroid style frames, which I'm going to cut apart and use as embellishments on my layout. This lovely turquoise and black and white chevron from Lily B Design Buttercup. This pale pink floral from Country Picnic Collection, that's by Pebbles. The other side is a hot pink, um, sort of a, a hand-drawn chevron. A really simple pale blue white polka dot um, from Bella Boulevard, and that's in their Baby Boy Collection, and it has this bolder polka dot on the other side. This one's slightly older. This is from the Peachy Keen collection from American Crafts, but it's a nice um, hot pink tone on tone, again with the chevron, but there we go. And then my black cardstock background. And I just have a single photo this week. The um, ideas here will be, you can adapt to whatever number of photos you want. But I'm working at the moment on some older photos, and that means that I have a lot of one-off photos where I just don't have anything else from that same day or same event. So I have this one particular picture. It's not an amazing shot, but it's the only shot I have from that day and I'm going to go ahead and work with it and I'm not going to crop it or anything I'm going to leave it as the whole image because it's an older picture and I don't have um this isn't a digital photo or anything like that so that's where I'm starting today and I'm going to go ahead and start with cutting a few of these Polaroid boxes out I'm just going to cut um maybe one row full so that I have enough to start um, figuring out how I want to embellish the page and then of course I'm going to be using the DIY thickers for my title Here's the basic framework that I'm going to use. I um, added a few different photo mats to the photograph and just kind of offset them so they're not perfectly square. And a strip of the um, big, bold black and white polka dot to go with my five Polaroid frames. And then I just took all of the different pattern papers that I used on the page and used the same big flower punch to punch five um, matching flowers and attach them to each of the Polaroid frames with a pop dot. I may add something else on top of them, like a, a something sparkly to the center of the flowers or something like that, but you could um, use that idea and change it up so you could use, you could just fill the rectangle, so you could put squares or rectangles, something very um, linear in the Polaroid frame, or you could use whatever shape fits the theme of your page or fits the feel. So you could put butterflies, you could put stars, you could put any anything that you can die cut or punch, you could add to each of those frames. And since there's no pre-purchased um, embellishments there, nothing that came in a, a package, you're looking at quite a low price point if you already have the punch. So going back a few weeks, that was something we were talking about, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is my title, which I'm going to use those DIY thickers. And because I've used pink and turquoise, I've pulled out that pink extra fine glitter that I was using before, and then also a turquoise glitter from another um, uh, another brand that I had in my stash. And I'm going to use that folded technique to create my two-tone glitter thickers to match this page. Okay, so I have picked out the letters for my title, and I've cut them out, and then folded all of the paper over so that it's halfway just folding it down till it meets the bottom and then creasing it so that I can do all of the top of the letters in pink and then come back and do the bottom of each letter in turquoise glitter. So I'm just going to dunk each one in the glitter to do the top half and then I'll repeat that with the turquoise. To do the second half of the letter, I just remove the rest of the paper and dunk it in the second pot of glitter. And then I have my two-tone letters. Now I wanted to use these in comparison with a set of thickers that are pre-made glitter thickers. So you can just see the difference in the kind of sparkle that you would get. And by because I cut each letter out to apply the glitter, it does also make it a little easier to figure out the spacing. So I know this word is going to fit in that gap because I can um, see all the individual letters there. I'm still going to spell um, from the last letter back just so that I have the best chance of getting the spacing right. And then each letter just peels off from the background backing sheet. And... I want these to just rest on that top layer of pattern paper there. Now, 
of course, now that these are all covered in glitter, they aren't um, the least messy of supplies ever. The, the kind that come with the glitter pre-stock, you only get um, oops, you only get one color in the package, but it is quite well stuck, so you have a real minimum of um, of glitter coming loose everywhere. This is a little bit more messy. If um, you don't like the idea of having glitter on your fingers at all, because some people are not a big fan of that. You can use tweezers to remove them from the, the sheet and put them on your layout, and um, you'll still need to brush off the extra glitter at the end, but um, you'll have a lot less mess with your hands, because the extra glitter isn't really coming from the letters, it's coming from the backing sheet. Here's my finished page with the writing added at the bottom and then I just added a little bit of embellishment either side of the photo. So I took a border sticker that's from this sheet from Create Paper's Pretty Paper Collection and I used this hot pink border here. I just cut two pieces of it, one to go this side and one to go on the other. And then put the date here with a, a little bit of detail, the rest of the writing's here, and then I punched one more of the flowers to tuck over here so that this um, group of embellishments isn't so isolated and has that repeat on the other side. I decided not to add anything to the center of these because when I started to build them up, I quite like flowers like this with all sorts of different layers on top, but because there was only one photo, I found that when I, the more I stacked on top, the more your attention went to the flowers and not to the picture. So I decided that that would be um, something for a different page. Maybe if I'd only had one flower, it would work, but with five, it was just quite overbearing. And then I, um, since I didn't put anything in the center of those, I just sprinkled a few of the little um, page, uh, well, what are they called? Candy dots. And they are from Pebbles, and they come on a sheet like this. Um, there's only about half of them left now. But um, these are white with a little iridescent glitter, glitter finish, but they come in all different kinds. And they come without glitter. They come in pearls and buttons and all things like that. So um, you don't, if you're not a glitter fan, don't despair. You can still use those for just a sprinkling here and there. And that's my page for this week. I'd love to see you give the DIY um, idea a try. And if you don't have DIY thickers yet, see what else you can adapt in your stash to develop the DIY idea and just take that little bit of creativity on your own little adventure. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.